Okay, let's talk about the one piece of tech that is absolutely everywhere right now, generative AI. It's writing poems. It's making art. It's, well, it's doing a lot. But how? How in the world does a computer actually create something totally new? Well, we're going to pull back the curtain and find out. I mean, seriously, have you thought about it? You type a few words and poof, this incredible, complex thing appears. It really does feel like magic, right? But here's the thing. It's not. It's actually a really clever, really fascinating process. And I promise, by the time we're done here, you're going to understand exactly how that magic trick works. So to really get generative AI, we can't just start there. We've got to go back. We need to look at its family history. Think of this next part as climbing down the AI family tree, starting with the great-grandparent of it all, and working our way down to today's revolutionary new kid on the block. At the very, very top of that tree is the ancestor of everything, artificial intelligence, AI. This is the big, broad idea. Honestly, any time a computer does something that feels a little bit smart, you know, like noticing a pattern or making a simple decision, yep, that falls under the huge umbrella of AI. But the first wave of AI, it was pretty rigid. It basically just followed a long list of if this, then that rules that a human had to write out by hand. It had zero understanding of context. And you can probably guess the problem. If the human's rules were biased or just plain wrong, the AI would be too. It was clear we needed something better, a system that could actually learn on its own. And that need for something more flexible brings us to the next generation, machine learning or ML. This was a massive leap forward. Instead of being spoon-fed rules, ML systems learn straight from data. You just show it thousands and thousands of examples, and it starts to figure out the patterns all by itself so it can make predictions. And you use machine learning constantly, probably without even thinking about it. That spam filter that keeps your inbox from being a total disaster? That's machine learning. The streaming service that somehow knows exactly what movie you're in the mood for? You guessed it. Also ML. It's fantastic at classifying things and making predictions based on what it's seen before. But machine learning had its own set of problems. It kind of choked on really messy, complicated stuff, like raw images or just normal human speech. It still needed a lot of hand-holding from people to work right. So the search was on for an even smarter, more independent way for machines to learn from the world. And that brings us to deep learning. Now this, this branch of the family tree is a total game changer. It uses something called neural networks, which are kind of inspired by the layers of neurons in our own brains. This structure lets it learn directly from raw data, no handholding required. It can just look at a photo and identify a cat, not because a person told it to look for whiskers or ears, but because it figured out the patterns of catness all on its own. Okay, so we've come down the family tree, from the big idea of AI to machine learning to the powerhouse of deep learning. And now, now we get to the really special branch. This is the point where the entire goal of AI makes a massive shift. It's not about just recognizing things anymore. It's about creating them from scratch. And this right here, this is the most important idea to get. On the left, you have traditional AI. It's all about recognition. Is this email spam? Is there a cat in this photo? But generative AI on the right is all about production. It doesn't just find the cat in the photo. It creates a brand new photo of a cat that has never, ever existed. That is the fundamental jump. And what it can create is just exploding. We're talking chatbots that can write surprisingly human-like stories, image models that create stunning artwork from a single sentence, even tools that can summarize a huge report in seconds or generate brand new audio. The one thing they all have in common, they are all generating new stuff. So we get what it can do. But the real question is, how? How does a machine, a pile of circuits, learn to understand and create with something as messy as human language? It's time to pop the hood and take a look inside the engine room. It really boils down to three main steps. First up, tokenization. The model takes a sentence and just shatters it into tiny pieces, or tokens. Think of them like Lego bricks. Next, embeddings. Every single one of those little bricks gets turned into a long string of numbers. And finally, vectors. That string of numbers isn't random. It's like a set of GPS coordinates that places that word on a giant, complex map. And on that map, words with similar meanings end up close together. And this quote right here, this nails it. The model doesn't know what a king or a queen is. It doesn't store a definition. It just knows that the relationship, the distance and direction between man and woman on its map, is statistically identical to the relationship between king and queen. It's not about meaning, it's about math. It's geometry. 
Now, this ability to create things based on patterns is, frankly, incredible. But it is not perfect, not by a long shot. And it's so important that we understand the limits and the traps that come with it. So let's do a quick reality check. First things first, these models can be very confidently wrong. See, their only job is to generate what's statistically probable, what sounds right, not what's factually true. So sometimes they just make stuff up. They'll invent facts, cite sources that don't exist. We call these hallucinations. Second, and this is a big one, a model is only as good as the data it's trained on. It's like a mirror. If the billions of articles and books it learned from contain human biases and stereotypes, then guess what? The AI is going to reflect those biases right back at us. It's the ultimate garbage in, garbage out problem. And finally, because these AIs learn from, well, basically the entire internet, sometimes they learn a little too well. Instead of creating something brand new, they might accidentally just spit out text or parts of an image that they saw over and over again in their training data. And that can lead to some really tricky situations with copyrighted material. All of this, the incredible power and these serious kitfuls, it all brings us to one final and maybe the most fascinating question. After seeing how it's all put together, from breaking words into bricks to navigating these giant maps of language, what does this thing actually understand? And that's the thought I really want to leave you with. If these amazing systems are just world-class pattern matchers, just predicting the next most likely word in a sentence without any real sense of what it all means, do they understand anything? Or are we just looking at a new kind of tool, an incredibly powerful mirror that simply reflects our own collective language and intelligence back at us? That right there is the big question at the very heart of generative AI. Thanks for joining me.